Hello, Blizzard Internets, and welcome to this video where today I will be attempting to build a competitor to the uh, early 2000s smaller hatchbacks. Like, I've built competitors to the Voxel Astra Golf and Ford Focus kind of class. I'm thinking of a class just below that. So you'll see we have loads of various bodies here. We probably want one within the last five years, if that's possible. We have this really ugly 2000 hatchback. The car I'm going to be using for comparison is going to be the 2001 Mini. I might bring a few others in after the point just to compare. These are apparently the same um, length, interestingly, although that looks shorter. It probably means it's got more interior space, which is always a good thing. Now... We want, uh, we want panel material. I'd say partial aluminium. Sure, should be manageable for 2001. And keep weight down just a little without going all the way to making a full aluminium bodied car. I mean, there was the Audi A2. That was, a, I think, from... Was it A2? A2 or A1? I'm forgetting the terms. But that was from about 2000. And that was the first all aluminium production car. Despite being a smaller car. So, you know, it is possible. We won't be going with a space frame. There is various technologies here. Don't think we'll be going with a semi space frame either, but depends which is cheap. Unitary is cheap. Ladder is real well cheap to engineer that is. Ladder is really cheap, but you know, it's not gonna work. It's just it's a past technology really for uh, economy cars, uh, Unitary would work a lot better with an economy car. We have various um, chassis technologies. as AHS steel and light AHS steel. As far as corrosion goes, I think that is the most important thing here. Corrosion and engineering time. So, if we can keep that... AHS steel should do okay. I mean, the engineering time is the same as corrosion resistant steel, and it should be a little stiffer. Light AHS steel will provide the same thing, only a bit lighter, but the engineering time is vastly higher, so we don't want to bother with that. We'll go with a transverse front mounted engine, as is standard for a class by this point. Probably McPherson strut on the front, whatever the cheapest we can get away with is. So, torsion beam. What's the engineering time? Engineering time is quite low for torsion beam. It seems to be the lowest, I would say lowest independent. It's not independent suspension, but the lowest more modern suspension that isn't solid axle coil or anything. The only time solid axle coil and leaf work are on rear wheel drive cars, really. Torsion beam is just a simpler version that works a lot better on a front wheel drive layout. Yeah, I can speak, honestly. Now, the Mini has a... It actually has a few options for engines. The one I'm looking at here is a 90 horsepower 1.6 litre engine, probably an inline four. But the number of cylinders isn't necessarily that important. It'll be an inline three or an inline four either way. Inline four will probably be better for refinement. So that's something to bear in mind, though. But it's also a diesel, 88 horsepower from a 1.4. I'm not sure if that's a turbo or not. I think it would be to get that power from a diesel. However, I don't think we need to make an engine that big. I think we can make a one litre engine and have it competitive with that. So, if we just bring the figures down, try and get it even. Bring you up just a little to kind of balance it out. Point 0.2. And point 0.2. There we go. So, that is a square engine, as I believe they call it. We'll go with an aluminium block. We'll go with push rod, no. I think, for, for the time being, I'll try just the standard overhead cam. Try and keep this thing simple if I can, although dual overhead cam isn't too unrealistic. We'll go with variable valve lift, I think that is. We'll go with cast iron internals, keep that cheap. And... So far, I think it's a good platform for a 1 litre engine. I've not really got much else to go through. I don't want a turbocharger. As I say, keep it simple if I can. 
I will go with multi-point injection if the need arises. I'm not trying to go like ultra simple muscle car here. I just want to keep it a bit simpler perhaps than it could be. Standard intake and regular fuel. And what's the exhaust we've got on here? We want to lean it out. We don't want a uh, rich fuel mixture because although it increases power, it does decrease the economy. I think tubular is aluminium. It saves a bit of weight. Like, look, we'll see. Uh, actually, cast log is quite light, mind. Although it's terrible for airflow, cast log is actually quite a lightweight technology when you compare it to short cast. But you just don't make the power that way. So, I don't know. I'll try cast log. If I can make it work, I can potentially get quite a decent light exhaust on. But if I have to make the exhaust ridiculously huge, then I won't go with it. We'll go with a three-way uh, collector converter and two baffled mufflers. If the markets say otherwise, I might change that. It's a very light engine as of yet, which is very good, 81.2 kilograms. And already we're hitting the red line. And I've not even made any adjustments yet. There we go, six horsepower. How is that for power, eh? Yeah, that's nowhere near the 90 of the Mini. I think we can get at least 70 from this. If if the acceleration speaks for itself, power isn't so important. And in some ways, less power can even be better. But whoa, we can get a saloon of this? This is like a Prius. Like a first-gen Prius. Which I kind of like. I mean, I say, I say it shamelessly. Because of how weird the first generation Prius looks as like a tiny saloon, I actually kind of like it, just for the weirdness, but I shouldn't, you know. I could, I, I'm thinking I could make this rear wheel drive and actually have really good weight balance now with that tail out there. But no, we want it to be a hatchback, we want it to be a more European car, we can go with the, uh, I think five door you would call that, ooh, that's like a two door, <laughs> that's a sports car version. So, we have a lot of bodies. A lot of them. Whoa, that's more of a minivan. We don't want that. We don't want a minivan. We want it to be more of a car. We want it to appeal to younger people as well. As older people. Older people would just go for practicality, I would assume. But the younger people, they would want it to look somewhat trendy as well. And 53 horsepower. Uh, low, yet yeah, low in the exhaust can make more power. Yeah. That's what I meant, though. It would have been a good way to save engineering time and whatnot, but unfortunately, it's just not going to work. And also, we play repair and replacement costs, but it's not it's not going to work for me. So, tubular it shall be. Long tubular, the difference is tiny, so I don't see much point in changing that. Thirty-eight uh, millimeter exhaust, although we could probably make that smaller. Hence, perhaps cheaper if we get rid of the blow-off valves. Bypass valve, sorry. My mistake. So, yeah, we can make the exhaust a little smaller. It's an economy car. We're not needing a large, sporty exhaust on this. That exhaust still looks relatively large on it, although, remember, it's only a one-litre engine, so that should be okay. Can, can I take the block away? Show you the basic internals, there we go. And we can get this thing started, hopefully. We're making 65 horsepower with just the initial tune. I'm quite happy with that. Ugh, let's hide it. It's going a bit funny and it's not showing the movement. There we go. It's neatening out quite nicely. Now, if we can move the engine bay back, the uh, philosophy of the original Mini actually was minimum space for the engineering -y bits, I think, and actually just give more space to the passengers. I'm going to kind of bring this window forwards a bit, try and make it a bit sportier by giving it the longer bonnet. That would just be plastic dashboard space anyway, though, let's be honest. If I did 
if I did um, bring this forwards, it would just give loads of space for a plastic dashboard. It's not really used for anything practical in most cars these days. So, you know, taking away that space from the buyers isn't really that big of a deal. We could bring that up or down just a little. I think if we go this way, we can bring it into a bit more of a saloon. It looks kind of like a Citroen C3 now. But we can make it more of a saloon. Give it maybe more of a bench here in case people want to sit on it. Which is always something you could do with your car. I think we have some kind of slightly aggressive lights at the way. Paint this in um, brown reindeer for now. I'll probably change it since I'm not the biggest fan of that colour. We don't want really modern tail lights. So anything up to 2000 we can have. Let's say, and tail lights. What do we have here? Various, various tail lights, but none of them are quite what I'm looking for. Ooh! I did use some like this on my MG6 competitor as headlights, however, I see these working. I envision these working, yes. I don't know, um, will you slot into there? Indeed you will. But I'm not a fan of that in the slightest. I'm not a fan of it. Shameless to say. Oh dear. Will you, will you position yourself in a place where I can be happy with you? And where I cannot get angry at my PC anymore. Um, I think we have problems. We could try moving and stuff, but unless I go with that one, which will kind of hide it. Yeah. Yeah, that hides the um, defects well. Actually, as much as I don't like that colour on them, it does hide the defects. So for the time being, I'm going with that. We can go with a badge. I think we'll go with a standard automation one. As you do. Right there. You have a standard car. It's nothing special. Put this one here for now, although I may move it onto the grill I'm going to place. The uh, grill I'm going to place is going to be in the grills. Ooh. Yes. I've had an idea, which I'll probably hate when, when I've done it, but I've had an idea. Yes. Italian design. It's Italian design. That's what I'm saying, even though it's not. It was designed by some designer. <laughs> I guess everything's designed by a designer. So, my uh, monitor's a designer, even though it's just an average LG television, it's, it's it's a designer television, because a designer designed it. Yeah. These things are strange. Um, it's got no eyes. Uh, should I do a mini and just stick some round lights on it, or... Should I put something more sophisticated on it? I think I'll just do a mini. Not those ones though, because I want kind of more sophisticated ones, if that makes sense. Like these ones, more modern looking headlights. Yay, this looks like something from a, what's it? It looks like something from an old Ridge Racer game. I'm sure there was one of the cars and it just looked like this. And then I could sneak some indicators in. Although I will say now I'm not a fan of how it looks. Um, I can't be a fan of my own art, but I, I just, it's just a bit goofy for me personally. It's not just the fact that I've created it. So, move this down. I mean, who would look at a Mini and say, you know what, I'd rather have one of these weird things instead. Uh, I don't think anyone in their right mind, but still, 
I can hope. Indicator. <laughs> yeah, to be honest. To be honest, with this class of car, it is probably like... You know what? I'll probably have one of these weird-looking things instead. After all, the insurance is cheaper. Because insurance, like, these days is everything. Which kind of explains my uh, one-litre engine decision, you know, because the insurance on one-litre engines is going to be cheaper, naturally. So, if I put a one-litre engine in this, it gives it a better chance of having cheap insurance than if it was a 1.6-litre engine, while still perhaps having the desirable power level. At least that's how it works out in my head. I've got my indicators there now, it looks even stranger. But let's go with it. I'll go with a lower grill. It's a bit upset. We need to flip this upside. We need to turn that frown upside down. Probably the best usage of that word I'm ever going to get. So there we go. And there we go. It's smiling now. It's smiling. And we can maybe have some fog lights down here as well. I like to kind of have the invisible bumper, if that makes sense. On a, on a modern car, I can't really explain it, but it's just like have a strip of nothingness where the bumper kind of is. And your eye fills it in. We'll go with maybe some of these down here. There we go. It's a little strange. It's a little strange and it probably has far too much cooling for what it is, but... It's a car. I mean, what can you say? The people who drive this probably won't even know what engine it's got. They probably won't even know what an engine is. <laughs> I mean, that's a step too far to assume that, but... I don't I, I don't feel like they're going to be very technically minded. They'd care more that it has a smile on it than anything. We do need a plate. We need a plate of some kind. Eco, to be honest. It says... It, it is what it says it is. There's no need to hide it. Can bring that to the front, perhaps? Is that how you do it? I don't know. I'm sure that button here is for moving things forwards, but it doesn't seem to be doing it. I don't know. Does this move it back, then? Hmm. I'm lost. Oh well, we've got a plate there. Not quite how I wanted it to be there, but it is there. Eco, again. And we can have centre mounted exhausts. I feel that would look good and it would serve its purpose as well. It wouldn't be fake. There we go. So, kind of one wheel exhaust, but broken into two right there. Saves money over having a fake exhaust as well. At least in my head it does. <laughs> Although I've just realised how stupid that sounds. We can have some taillight deflectors, hopefully. These doodads. Because I think they have to have them in America, if the taillight's an immovable piece of bodywork. Even though it isn't, it kind of makes it match up with real car regulations and makes it look a little more real. So I like that about it. This looks like a Gran Turismo starter car now. <laughs> it looks like you buy it as a weird uh, thing. It's a, it's a combination of a Mini and a Citroen C3 in a way they should never have been together. I mean the cars are just so different. I, I don't know. It's just like... My mind's saying, why are you doing this? You know, you know what you're doing is wrong. You should just stop it before it's too late. We have some mirrors with plastic cladding on. Yay. Because it's cheap. It's a cheap car, this. We don't give them no chrome. Or maybe we'll give them some chrome. Give them some chrome in like a place they really don't need chrome. Uh, door handles. We need some... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I've just had a stupid idea. <laughs> I just had a really stupid idea. Um, there we go. Now the design makes sense. Now the design makes sense, even though that's probably too far back to actually have any usage. 
it's just a fake vent there to um, make it look sporty. Probably put some sporty wheels on as well and slam it to the ground. Because <laughs> that's just what you want in your family car. We'll go with standard door handles. Um, I think, are they mirrored? Yes, they are mirrored by default. That's good. We can go with some slapped on the back. They're not uh, put on properly, but I don't really care by this point. I just want to get the car done. I've, I've done so much of a design. That off-centred off door handle, I don't think anyone's really going to care. It's not a pretty car, nor will it ever be a pretty car. There's my McPherson strut front suspension and my trailing arm wear. I mean, so far, I think I've done quite well of managing the budget. We'll have a manual, perhaps? I think for the era, it, for the era it's a basic car. So a five-speed manual, I think. Although, would it be a four-speed? Uh, no, I think four-speed is more the era before. Although, if it was an automatic, it would probably be a four-speed. We'll go with a, a five-speed manual at the time. How much? How quick is this going to go? I don't think it's going to exceed 120. We'll go with an open differential. No point in spending extra money on that. As I say, the people driving this probably won't even know what engine it's got, so... That's something we want hard, long life tyres as to make them last as long as possible. 155s. Hopefully they provide enough grip. I mean, honestly, that's what I'm going with. Hopefully they give enough grip off. Um, I could I could make this a wide body, but it's probably more important. It's easier to park. So, yeah, even if it's better for performance, technically. Moving the wheels out, though, there's no harm in that, particularly. So I'll do that. Maybe extend the wheel arches just a little. And the front's just to absorb them. But I'm still not making it a proper wide body. Just a bit of flare. Nothing too much. And then back to this other menu. Sorry. Um, back to this other menu. Where I can fix the lights. Because they've gone a bit disobedient. As I can actually fix the badge as well because it looks in a slightly wrong position. Yay! Badge is fixed. I need to uh, change some other bits. Wheel primary. I think I'm happy with the wheels as they are. We'll go with pillar. What's that? Chrome? Or I could have... I could just paint that body colour. To be honest, I think I will. You know, it looks strange at first, but I'm pretty sure when people get used to it, they'll start to like it. I've got all these various things. Well, uh, there, there, you need to remember how to speak. There's a trim piece somewhere. Window trim, there we go. Um, steel, yes. It's not chrome. We need to make that clear. It does not have chrome-lined windows. We are not fancy. No, come on. Fix yourselves. I don't know. There we go. You're fixed. You're in place, just as you should be. And check that off. Could we have a wing? No, it's not necessary. So, moving on. Um, alloy wheels, sure. I don't see the harm in alloy wheels. We'll go with solid discs. Um, one piston, it's an economy car. And drums on the way. I would be amazed if it needs more than that, to be honest. Well, maybe it needs two piston, but I'd be amazed if it needs more than two piston solid discs on the front and drum brakes on the rear because it's an economy car at its very uh, core. It's not going to be that heavy. It's not going to be that fast. It's not going to have any particular reason to need it. <laughs> Is that an excuse to make it not sporty? No. Um, we'll go with a semi-clad under tray. Again, I'm trying to save a bit of money on engineering time while still making it built to a decent level. 
We've got a five seat to car here. We'll go with a standard interior, I think, with a basic cassette system. Really basic cassette, basic CD is probably more on the era. Because you could get a CD. I think we're going for a slightly higher trim here. You know, you get a C you get some extras, you get a CD player, you get a nice set of alloy wheels, but it's not a top spec, nor is it a lowest spec. I'll start off with no power steering. If it's under a ton or just over a ton, it shouldn't need any power steering. Although I could just go with normal hydraulic, to be honest. Engine, I don't know. I'll have to see how heavy it ends up. Because if it ends up like 800 kilos, I definitely won't need power steering at all. As much as it would be a convenience. Um, safety, we want advanced. Do we want advanced? I'd say standard 90s. Because, again, it's not a high-end car. It's... A good car for the class, but it's not ultra high end, so why should we spend the money on making it ultra high end? Hmm. This is where the compromising comes in, though, because power steering would be useful, I think, even on a lighter car. However, there is engineering time associated with these things, so. I think it's a good compromise to just have hydraulic and ABS. Should it need traction control? And electronic stability control? Probably not. It's not a quick car, as I say. ABS, however, does have important usages, as does hydraulic power steering, so that's what I'm going with. Electric does exist as well. It's apparently more or less the same, but hydraulic's probably more proven by this stage in time. We have a lot of stuff around here. Um... I think gas monotube might improve the handling. Just slightly better dampers again. Make it slightly better here and there. Normal. Sport. Comfort. Yeah, it just it doesn't look good unless it's low. To be honest though, with that wide height, I'm not too shocked. The front brake force is low. Maybe you need to make the brakes slightly larger then? I don't know. The load capacity is low. Let's give it sports suspension. Yes, it's a sports car now. And the engine is underpowered. We need a more powerful engine. That is to be expected, actually. Ooh, yeah. The weight is very good. 973 kilograms. That should make for quite a neat, sporty car, especially if we pile power onto it. It's like the Covet in BMNG, only we have perhaps something safer. And all in all, I hope it does put the power down, because those tyres are tiny and weak. Now, if we go back, or if we go back to the gearbox, that was it. Can we see how quick it is now? We should be able to. With our 5 speed manual. It's not bad to 60 actually. For a 65 horsepower car. Despite the game saying it's underpowered. I mean look. 14.3 seconds. It really doesn't seem too bad. Why of all categories it would put it into pony budget though? I don't know. It's a city car okay. It's How is it? Like, it says a muscle car, a big engine, rear-wheel drive. I don't have any of those things on this side. Like, how is it a muscle car? The engine isn't that big for the size of vehicle. It's a one litre in a vehicle that really is designed for a one litre. So it's not like I've gone with a particularly big engine or anything. Anyway, I do need to adjust everything here, so that's what I'll do, and I'll return when I have done it. Okay, so here we have an engine, which is quite engine bay filling, and you'll see it has a little, little turbo on it. It is also a 1600cc engine instead of a whatever tiny one it was before. That is because it's turbocharged, and I've tried to balance technology and overall performance and uh, economy 
and it kind of worked. You'll see here I have my intercooler. I could probably have messed with that, but I didn't. We have, it can rev up to uh, 7800, but I've not used it quite that high. I think 7400 is where it wants to rev right now. We've got a standard inline four. Yep, I wanted to make a one litre, but as it turns out, it's the same engine size as a Mini. Now, looking at a few of the cars, though, we have got an extremely good result out of this. As you'll see, there's our car. We just move along to the transmission, which has been eventually a sequential six-speed. Seems to be a good balance between manual and advanced automatic, and the markets seem to like it. Yeah, it does 0 to 62 in seven seconds. That is craziness for something that also has 47.5 miles per gallon. Now, it is beaten just about by the Honda Jazz, which has 49 in its 1.4, guys. However, that only has 82 horsepower. That doesn't have 125, and I'm bringing up all kinds of menus on my PC. And there is a few other vehicles here. Sorry about that popping up there. We have the um, Mini I'm trying to beat, that makes 115 horsepower, and it only has uh, 42 miles per gallon, but if that's an old K-series, that's to be expected, it won't have been the most cutting-edge engine at the time. We have the Clio Sport 172 as well, I've brought up. Why have I brought this up? Is by being a much higher tier sports car. Well, this is what I've matched for acceleration, crazy as it sounds. I've actually matched a Clio Sport, although it's much closer to the Lupo GTI in terms of top speed. It's only uh, two miles per hour faster than that, so as what you would expect. Looking through these menus, you'll see everything is pretty much as I left it. Safety is now standard 90s. I did some changes. Now, I did notice, actually, markets, they tend to like it when you throw this stuff on. Actually, variable hydraulic, it doesn't have that much engineering time increase, yet the markets really love it. They also, and it doesn't affect the pricing too much. Same with electronic stability control, I guess you could say, though. I want to keep this car relatively simple. The engine is complex as it is. And, yeah, for whatever reason, chucking that stuff right to the highest does give it really good market score. Or actually, it doesn't. Not in the case of both of them. Chucking it to variable hydraulic and ESC gives it a really good market score. However, I don't want to be going that complicated on the car. It is a simple car. I want to keep it simple. Well, as simple as I can realistically get it. We've got slightly better dampers and sway bars to help it corner. And I did fix the worst of the problems. It's still got minor problems, but there is most of them fixed there. 65% of the weight of the front, almost. And it is able to tow over 1,500 kilos. Who would have thought? We're also able to load it with over 200 kilos. This is a utilitarian hot hatchback. I wasn't intending to make it the hot hatchback, but hey, so it is. I can also just easily make this car quicker as well by putting better tyres on it and a sport tuned turbo. Because if we go back into the engine itself, we'll see we're making huge torque and a solid amount of power as well. I think it's a torque that does push this for the most part. It wouldn't be so quick as it is if it weren't for the torque. But anyway, that uh, turbocharger... I did just stick uh, fuel economy on it for the time being and I tuned everything else around it and I put maybe a slightly bigger intercooler on it in order to make more power from the engine because for whatever reason having a over-engineered intercooler makes more power. I'm not sure of the specific science behind it but it works so I won't complain. Now looking back here we still have torsion beam on the way. And I've done that because, well, rear suspension doesn't really affect time, and why have I got that on my monitor? And the front suspension is what affects the time, so that's why I've basically spent out on the front and spent nothing on the rear, because as far as handling's concerned, that's where all the money should be. We can go back to the vehicle selector screen, but I don't want that right now. And... I have called it the Sensible Motors Egg, naturally, because it looks like an egg. We have a lot of cornering Gs, I guess. 
I'm just guessing at this stage. We have a lot of lift. <laughs> it wants to take off. It doesn't look like the ideal teardrop shape aerodynamically, but still. I think it looks sportier this way, so that's why I won't be making it like that. It just looks like a sporty Citroen C3 <laughs> at this stage, I think. And I'm happy enough to go along with that. Also, I have four seats, not five. I was able to get that working. Although, the markets, as I said, they can change their mind over what they actually like. So, one moment it can be one thing, and then the next moment it can be the next thing. No, they seem to like a four-seater at the moment, though. Fully cloud under tray. And I have got vented discs on the front, but they're only two pistons. And they're slightly larger, but again, they're vented discs. So, it kind of balances out in terms of weight. And the drums on the way are heavier. Which turn is which in turn helps kind of balance the car, although it's almost 65% of the front, it's very front heavy. About as much as the uh, theatre bar, I seem to think of this now as actually a predecessor to that, if that makes sense, even though there wasn't one. Well, there was a Panda 100 horsepower, but that was a slower vehicle entirely than this is. <laughs> this is a bit more beastly, I think we can say that much now. The fixtures and everything, they've been done. I could go into more detail on them, but I can't be bothered. It works. It cohes It's a cohesive enough design. And the test track. What time did it set? I should probably... Fine is oh yeah, also it's great for suspension and wheels, not so great for everything else. Um test track, there we go. It's a 230.93, which if I minimize this window, we can see somewhere. Where are you hiding? There we go, 230.93. It's just below the CRT Pong and Core 2 Duo Super Sport man I built. Also below the MDF Flywood. And the coupe non-turbo, which seems to be beating a lot of vehicles. I'll also uh, specify that it is front-wheel drive by this stage, as it is front-wheel drive. And it is above, by little over a second, the board Fox Speed. That was actually a 170 horsepower hot hatchback from the same era, I believe. So, for this to... Beat it, you know, in what's only supposed to be a warm hatchback. That is not bad in the slightest. We've also beaten the Country, which was a huge luxury 300-ish horsepower turbo land yacht. Monster and his kids um, sport MPV, which was rear-wheel drive, I think. That's what it is. And Benevolent Johnson. And the Tortoise Turbo, naturally. The Tortoise Turbo is a long way down on it. So, I think I've done okay. Really, it's the car is the engine. If I just uncover it, if I find the uh, menu. The car is the engine. The Because beyond that, there's nothing really special about it. The, the engine is what makes it special. I did also try it longitudinally, just in case anyone's wondering. And it did work. I think it did fit in the car, but it didn't make the car any better. It's better mounted transversely for the handling and the overall car as a package. And that's why I've left it transversely mounted. Yay, transverse. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here. I think I've covered everything. Go on the markets briefly. Yeah, it fits into fun, kind of into fun budget, but no one wants to pay that much money for it. And Family Sport, it's a bit of that as well. It's not the most competitive car in the world, but hey, I tried. That's all I can say. But I'm going to leave it here for today, so I can hopefully remove the body, show you the chassis, and I'll say goodbye until another day.